look underneath the bus and make sure there's no fluids leaking. And I want to make sure the bus is not leaning. If it's leaning, it would be at a suspension problem or a tire inflation problem. Okay, the whole time I'm around this bus, I'm going to be listening for a hissing sound, air leak. If I hear an air leak, then I've got to find out whether it's my brakes or whether it's my tires. All right. I asked the examiner if I can group things, and he said yes. I'm going to make sure everything on the bus is secure. And it's not, uh, no bolts missing. And whatever has fluid in it or whatever has air in it, I want to make sure there's no fluid leaking and no hissing sound. All metal is checked the same way. It's secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. Most metal on a school bus cannot be welded. That includes the surge tank here. No nuts and bolts missing. The radiator cap is on secure, not leaking. Don't take it off when it's hot. Sight glass secure, not broken. Shows a coolant color, and it's not leaking. All the hoses are checked the same way, and the clamps to make sure they're secure. No bubbles, no cracks, no slits, and no leaks. And that includes radiator hoses, air compressor hose, governor hoses, power steering hoses, airlines, airlines. Okay, he never moved that back. Okay. Then we want to go to all the belts. I want to come around in there that way. Go the other way. Come in through that way. Okay, all the belts are secure, not cracked or broken, and not worn down to the shiny, and had no more than a three-quarter inch play in them. And that includes the alternator belt all the way over there, the fan and the water pump belts in the middle, power steering belts, air compressor belts. And we want to make sure all the pulleys are secure, no nuts are missing, they're not cracked, bent, or broken, and the castle nut and collar key is in place, and all the nuts and bolts are in place. Then we're going to the power steering reservoir. We want to make sure it's secure, not cracked or broken, and nothing's leaking underneath of it. The wing nut is secure, the cap is secure, no leaks. In order to check the level, there are three dipsticks on the bus, and we would check, the, check them all the same way. Take the cap out, pull it out, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it out on a horizontal, and make sure we can check this one hot or cold. Put it back in, tighten it, no leaks. Then we're going to check the air compressor next and the governor. We want to make sure they're secure, they're not cracked, bent, or broken. Now I see no fluid leaks and I hear no hissing sounds around them. No bolts are missing. Okay. The overall engine area is secure, not cracked or broken. No bolts are missing and no leaks. The next is the steering. We want to check the rubber boot to make sure it's not cracked or broken and nothing gets up into the driver's compartment. It's secure around the driver's compartment. The rest is made of metal. It's secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. And that includes the steering shaft. The U joints are secure and well greased. No bolts are missing. Steering box, no leaks. Pitman arm. Want to get in here? Okay. Steering box, no leaks. Pitman arm, drag wing, steering arms, tie rod. Okay, tie rod. Okay. And that's that. And all the castle knots and cotter keys are in place. Now the next is suspension. It's all made of metal. It's secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. And that includes a shock absorber, no leaks. Spring hangers, clamps. U-bolts and the spring leaves themselves are all in line and secure and nothing's cracked or shifting, so they're in good shape. The next is the couplings to the airlines. We want to make sure they're not cracked or broken and no hissing sounds. The brake chamber and the slack adjuster are secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. The nuts, I'm sorry, the bolts with the holes in them and the cutter keys are in place. 
With the park brake off, if I pull the slack adjuster, it should not pull more than one inch. With a helper inside the service brake down, it should not come out more than a 90 degree angle. Okay, where can you see the best? Right there. Okay, behind the metal plate is the brake lining. It can't be less than one thirty seconds thin, no wool or debris on it. Want to stop and let it go for a minute? You ready to go to the other side? We're going to do the wheel. Well, I can do it and sew it. Okay. Or I can stop it and then... Well, let's just do it until it does. All the inside of the wheel is made of metal. It's secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and no welds on it. So, so. That includes the brake drum, the spoke, the rim. The hub is secure, all the bolts are present, and there's no leaks. All the uh, nuts and bolts are secure, clamps secure, and they're not broken or cracked. All the um, valve stems are secure, they're between the two bumps, there's no hissing sounds, and the cap's on tight. Okay, now I'm going to tell you the difference between the two tires, the back and the front ones. Um, first I'll tell you what's the same. All the tread is check to make sure there's no cuts in it, no nails, no glass. The sidewalls are checked to make sure there's no cuts or nails or glass in it and, and no bulges. The front tires have to have um, not less than 430 seconds of tread. The rear tires not less than 230 seconds. The front tires we run with 95 PSI. The rear tires we run with 90 PSI. And you would check them with a rubber hammer or something like this. Uh, or gauge. We want to make sure that there's no mixed match tires on the same axle, either radio or bias. And the front tires have to be brand new. They cannot be recapped and regrooved. The rear tires can. Okay. The mud flap is secure, the bolts are secure, and there's no debris buildup on it. Stop it. Check the water pump to make sure it's secure, it's not leaky. If it were, it would be right there underneath it would be the color of our coolant. We want to check the alternator, make sure it's secure, not broken, and it shows no spark marks. We check the wiring and the insulation around the wiring throughout the bus to make sure it's not sparking. We want to check the air breather, the wing nut secure, there's no blockage in the intake. We want to check the transmission, dipstick, same way as we did the other. We want to make sure the bus is running and hot. We check the oil dipstick when the bus is cold, same way. Check the windshield washer fluid. It's secure, not cracked or broken. It has enough for the trip. Okay, turn it off. We're going to do the underneath of the bus. You don't have to get under there. All you have to do is tell it. Underneath the bus is all made of metal except for our airlines, okay? The airlines are secured up on the main frame. And we want to make sure they're not cracked. You won't see them with that. Make sure they're not cracked, no bubbles, and no hissing sounds coming from them. And they are secure. The next thing is metal. It's all secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. No missing parts on it. And no welds on most of it. And that will start over behind the battery box, the air tank, and straps. No hissing sound. Next is the drive shaft, the hangers, the clamp, and the universal joints. Okay? And it runs into the differential in the back. And the differential, we want to check to make sure all the bolts are in place, none are missing, and none of the seals are leaking on it. And we want to check our exhaust system which runs the left length of the bus. It's metal and it includes the muffler, the pipe, the hangers, and the clamp. Okay? Then we want to check the mainframe and cross members. The mainframe is what everything is bolted to. The cross members is the floor support. We want to make sure they're not cracked, bent, or broken. No welds on them. And they're secure. And we're going to check the fuel cage, the straps, in the tank, same way we would other metal. We want to make sure that there's no moisture spots on it and no raw fuel smell. Okay?
Alright, then we're going to go in the back unless he tells us different. We're going to start with the suspension. We want to make sure the suspension is checked the same way as up front. And it includes, it includes the shock absorber, no leak, the hangers, the clamp, the U-bolt, the extra tour bar. I missed somebody. Okay, the shock is over, no leak. The hangers, the clamp, the U-bolt, the spring themselves, and the uh, tour bar. I missed the spring. Okay. Then we're going to check the the brakes in the back. We'll check with the air hose to make sure it's not leaking, no bubbles on it, and it's secure. The brake chamber and slack adjuster check the same way as up front. The brake line inside is the same as up front. The spacer in between the tires, we want to make sure that there's nothing caught in there, like blocks or bottles that could become missiles on the road. Okay, and that's checked the same way as the old metal. Secure, not cracked, bent, or broken, and no welds on that. And we're going to check all the wheels the same way, the same as we did up front. And that includes the brake drum, the rim, the spokes, and the spacer. And we want to check those valve stuff, one there and one there, the same way we did up front. There's no repeat downs, the cap's on, and it's between the two spots. We're okay. Check the um, hub and the axle seal. Make sure it's secure, all the bolts are present, and there's no leak. Alright. And we would check the tread back here, make sure there's no separation, because we have recaps on. Check the mud flap. Make sure it's secure, all the bolts are in place, and no buildup on it. Turn it off. Okay, you might want to call the block out the sun here. We're going to check all the lights the same way. We want to make sure the lenses are secure, they're not cracked or broken, the proper colors in place, and they are fairly clean. That includes the three clearance lights, amber in color, thin warning lights, amber on the outside, red on the end. I'm sorry. Amber on the inside, red on the outside. Hazard lights and turn signals, both these. They're amber in color. Headlight, high and low beam, white in color. Then we're going to go back up and check our windshield wipers. We want to make sure the blade's not coming off of it, the wiper area, and it's making contact with the window. We're going to check all the Rear brackets the same way, make sure they're secure, not broken, and they're in place. Okay. We're going to check all the glass on the bus the same way. We want to make sure it's not cracked, broken. All the seals around the windows are secure and they're not coming loose. And that includes, they're fairly clean. And that includes the windshield. The service door, passenger windows, lift door, and emergency door. And it also includes all our mirror glass. Okay? Then we're going to check the front, the radiator, grill, to make sure there's nothing blocking the airflow. Check the back, the um, bumper, and the student guard to make sure it's secure, not cracked, bent, or broken. Nothing missing on it. License plate secure and readable. back of the back wheel. And that includes the clearance lights and the reflectors. We want to make sure our reflectors, all of them are secure and airs are whole. If it was cracked, we would have to have 75%. Then we want to check the fuel door. Make sure it opens and closes. And we want to check the cap inside to make sure it's secure and it's not leaking. I smell no raw fuel odor. We'll check the turn signal, same way as up front. We would check the lift door the same way we would the emergency door. In the back, we would check all the lights the same way as up front. That includes three red clearance lights. 
one light and one inside red on the out. Brake lights red. Uh, turn signals and hazard lights are amber. Tail lights red. Tag lights white. Backup lights white. Reflectors red. Make sure the tag is secure and readable. Bumper secure. Tail pipe is secure. And nothing's blocking the intake. Open the emergency door. We're going to check inside to make sure that the tread's not coming up to cause a trip hazard. Make sure nothing has come down from the seat to call metal to cause a leg injury. And we want to check the heater to make sure there's no paper in it to cause a fire hazard. Okay. I'll stop it for a minute. Okay. Or are you going to stop now? Uh, we're going to check all the windows like we did up front. We're going down the side. Might have enough. If I run out, I'll have to start over. Okay. Best buy. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you what you're doing. Alright, we're going to check the battery box. We want to make sure it opens and closes. We want to make sure the batteries are secure and there's no corrosion on the terminal. Check the both stop signs to make sure the lights are secure, the lenses are not cracked or broken, and they're working. Make sure it opens and closes, make sure the gaskets are secure and not coming loose. And the glass in the door is secure and not cracked or broken. And we want to check the step tread to make sure it's not coming up for cause a trip hazard. Check the handrails, make sure they're secure. Check the step light, make sure it's secure and not broken. Turn the key, check your seatbelt while you're waiting for the blow plug to go out. Make sure it's working. It's working. Okay, seatbelt's working. Okay, turn it on. Check the step light right here. The marker is working. The switch in the door is working. Check the interior light. The interior lights are working. Alright, then I'm going to get up, walk through the bus, check the driver's seat, it's secure, check all the passenger seats, check the rear door, the Not broken. The gear selector box is secure and it's working. 
Go check your defroster fan. Make sure it's secure. If it works on high, it works on low. Check the underseat heaters and defrosters. Where there's two, you put the two on together. Low in the back. Near it. Okay. This side's low, high, low, high, low, high. The defroster's across the windshield are working. Then I'm going to do my dash next. I want to do all my indicator lights. Pull the headlights on. Check the uh, high living switch. It's working. Check the lights in the dash. They're working. Right turn signal's working. Left turn signal's working. Hazards are working. Turn that off. Now I'm going to check all my gauges to make sure they're working. The old, old uh, gauge is working and showing the correct PSI for idling. If I accelerate, the PSI swaps, I know that's working. The temperature gauge is working for this box. The RPM gauge is working. The speed on the road, we have to check that on the road. Have enough fuel for the trip. The battery is charging and in the green, and all the glass and the dash is secure. Okay, we're going to do the air brake test next. Turn the key off. Release the park brake. Push the service brake down. Ask the examiner to start timing you now. We're going to be doing this for one minute to make sure we don't lose any more than three PSI. We did not lose any air. Then I'm going to turn the key, but not the engine. I'm going to check the warning system. The warning system came on at 60 PSI. The spring brake just popped, and that came on between 40 and 20 PSI. And you just skidded. Yeah, here that did. <laughs> that wasn't me. Okay, I'm going to rev it up to 1500 RPM. Okay, I'm watching to see if the warning light goes off. Yep. The warning light went off above 60, so we know that's okay. we got to fill it up a little bit more. And then we're going to demonstrate the park brake, make sure it's holding. And just put it in reverse, put the chocks are loose a little bit in reverse, it's holding. And we're finished the inside of the um, pre-trip. Then we have to ask the examiner to go outside and check our lights. When the examiner goes out the door, at the point he says, yeah, okay, you turn the lights on, markers first, hazard, shut the door, turn the uh, student warning lights on, set the amber light. Okay. He's telling to look top down. He's checking it. He had checked the markers, now he's checking the amber light. So you're going to open the door. He's checking the red light. You shut the door. Let all the equipment come in. Now reset the amber lights for the back. He's now had time to see the hazards. Take those off. Right turn signal. Left turn signal. And now he's checking the uh, headlight high low beam. Get your hazards back on. Walk into the back, he'll be on your driver's side when he does, okay? He's looked up, he's seen the uh, amber markers, and he's also seen the two warning So you're going to open the door, he now sees the red, just turn the master off. He's had time to see the um, hazards. Take the hazard switch off, right turn signal, left turn signal. And touch the brakes just enough to get the brake light lit up, okay? And then you're going to put it in reverse. As soon as you hear that alarm system, you want to put it back. We're done.